multi-purpose vehicles or MPVs come in different price segments. You have at the right at the bottom, the ones like the Datsun Go Plus, then you have the Renault Triber. Then as you move up the value chain, you have products from Maruti like the Ertiga. Then as you move further, you have products from Honda like the WRV and the BRV. Then keep moving up, you have the very popular Toyota Innova, which of course has a major share in the MPV segment. There are competitors like the Marazzo and others, but beyond that, there is a huge difference in this segment. And right on top, you have the Toyota Wellfire and the Mercedes V-Class with the Marco Polo that costs around 1.46 crore. Well, now Kia Motors of the major Hyundai Chevrolet has brought in what's known as the Carnival. Now, Carnival cannot be compared with the Toyota Innova because it's in a different league, not only in size and shape, but also in terms of the price. Let me explain that further. And for that, I'm going to call my colleague Farhan Khan. And my name is Roy P. Tharian. Farhan, join me. While Farhan Khan will speak in his best of Hindi, I'm going to be speaking in the best of English. I'll try my best. First and foremost, how do you feel this car? The car looks like an Innova type of Innova. Yes, you're right. This Kia Carnival is a little larger in dimensions compared to the Toyota Innova. Right. Toyota Innova, if you compare it, there are very different features. If you compare Toyota Wellfire, there are very little. This is a beach segment that was very important in the market. Paran, you are absolutely right here. This is the Carnival has three trim levels. One is premium, prestige, and in the top end is limousine. And this is the most expensive. It starts at around 23-24 lakhs and goes up to 33-34 lakhs. So this fellow costs around 34 lakhs. On road, maybe around 42 lakhs. The most expensive and we are going to find out its features. And a very important point. While the Innova comes with both a petrol and a diesel engine, and an option for a manual transmission as well as an automatic. This fellow comes with a 2.2 liter diesel engine mated to an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now let's check out the features. The overall length of the Kia Carnival is 5115 mm as compared to the Innova Crystas 4735 mm and overall width of 1985 mm compared to 1830 mm for the Krista and a height of 1740 mm as compared to 1795 mm for the Krista. The Carnival has a wheelbase of 3060 mm as compared to the Innova Krista's 2750 mm. Thus, in short, it proves that the Kia Carnival is a lot longer and broader than the Innova Krista but is not taller. Okay, no more comparison. Let me now talk only about the Kia Carnival limousine. The Kia Carnival has got an aerodynamic styling with a floating roof design. The front of the Carnival comes with the typical Kia Tiger Nose grille with chrome inserts, wraparound LED projection lamps, ice cube shaped LED fog lamps and a long bonnet with plenty of glass area. The vehicle sits on R18 inches sputtering finish alloy wheels. There is a strong crease that runs along the length of the car. The car gets roof rails and chrome surround on the windows. The vehicle has dual panel sunroof. As you move to the rear, you get to see LED lamps. It has a power tailgate that can be opened by pressing a button inside or the button on your key fob or manually. Getting into the second and third rows is a breeze with a touch on the electrically operated sliding door handle. Once you are inside, you get to see premium Napa leather seat upholstery. Since this MPV is all about smart luxury and comfort and a car where you will at all times find the owner occupying the second row seats, let's get to know these seats better. Kia refers to the second row seats in the limousine as VIP seats. Since this is the most expensive uh, trim level for the Carnival, it's the limousine, 
They call the second row seats as the VIP seats. Now, I really feel that it should have been a wee bit better. For example, the armrests are not up to the mark. Farhan, what is your view about armrests? The quality is very, very down. Okay. और और वो and it doesn't also it's not broad enough also है ना तो आप अपने आम रखो तो इतना मजा नहीं आ रहा है ना no sir मेरे हिसाब से it's not a VIP seat okay it's a journal seat क्योंकि अगर ये VIP होती तो electrically controlled भी होनी चाहिए थी the cabin does look sophisticated and luxurious and is made up of high grade materials there is no denying the fact that the carnival exudes a premium look. Smart pure air purifier gives clean and fresh air to the occupants. The carnival comes with tri-zone auto AC, auto defog windscreen, front and rear parking sensors, auto dimming, rear view mirror and numerous storage spaces throughout the cabin. The VIP seats offer a lot of space for tall people when it comes to legroom and headroom. These seats are sliding and double reclining seats. They can also be adjusted for proximity to each other. They have wing out type headrests. The two VIP seats have a 10.1 inches dual touchscreen rear seat entertainment system and as for sound you get Harman Kardon premium 8 speakers sound system. The second row seats have access to sunroof controls and LED room lamps, door grip buttons for electrically closing and opening the sliding door but there is a lot missing in this space here. While the driver gets ventilated 10-way power seat but no memory setting, the ones in the second row get manual flap-like controls for adjusting the seats for all its different movements. Now these are really cumbersome to use. Ideally there should have been electrically operated buttons on the armrest, period. For the person seated diagonally behind the driver, there is no access to aircon and blower speed controls. He or she seated here is either dependent on the person to the right or will have to ask the driver to do the needful. The second row luxury VIP seats come with leg support but it is all manually controlled. Behind the front center armrest, you also get a USB charging slot as well as a 220 volt AC slot for charging your laptop or any other electronic device that does not take more than 200 watt of load. I'm third row seat. Ki baat kar raun. Specifically, there is a little under thigh support. It's very low. There is no room. Kam hai. Headroom is fine, but if you talk about adults and if there are three beds, then it will not be comfortable. Yes, if you don't have any option, you have to travel with your family and sit in the third row, there are two features that are good. There is an adjustable headrest that works in long routes and your seat is a little tilt and adjust. It will give you a little bit of peace. But yes, three people can't sit in this way, it's adults. Three children can sit in this way. हाँ, long route में काम आने वाली दो बहुत अच्छी चीजें। अगर आप travel कर रहे हैं और आपके मुंह पे धूप पड़ी थोड़ी problem होती है, तो इसमें curtain available है, जो company fitted है, जो second row में भी है और third row में भी। और साथ ही में आप आराम से अपना phone भी charge कर सकते हैं third row में। This also has a 60-40 split folding and once the two parts are folded, it places itself on the floor of the vehicle, making it easy to place luggage at the back. But if the third row seats are not folded, you have access to a deep cavity in the boot space wherein you can put a lot of luggage. 
Now coming to the front, as I mentioned earlier, the driver gets the best seat. The driver side door has the usual buttons for adjusting, the ORVMs, the door locks, etc. As you move to the dash area on the right of the steering wheel, you get to see a few buttons. The main one being the switch for your 220 volt AC charging slot for the second row seat. Steering mounted controls include the cruise speed settings, scroll button to go through your multi-information display screen functions and settings as well as volume control and voice navigation buttons. On the inner roof or headliner we have a few interesting buttons. There is a power door off switch which is primarily used to lock the power sliding door at the back as well as the tailgate. It is very useful when you have kids sitting at the rear and they try to push the door open button. When this is switched on the electricals are shut off thus ensuring that the doors and the tailgate are not opened accidentally. The button next to it is the one for the power tailgate. The two buttons on either side in front are the ones that open the sliding doors on the left and right. Tucked away near these buttons is a conversation mirror which is helpful when you want to converse with the person sitting at the back and you only have to glance at it rather than turning your head back. The floor console functions include those for electric handbrakes which is P. Then there is one for activating and deactivating your parking sensors. Auto hold one for an active eco drive mode and the last one for your driver seat ventilation. On the dash in front are the two glove compartments in various sizes. You have an 8 inches touchscreen infotainment system with inbuilt navigation. It also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility. Then there are a rear view camera, 3.5 inches cluster, LCD panel, smart key with push start stop button, tilt and telescopic steering, electrically adjustable ORVMs, all power windows with driver auto down and auto headlight control. Sadly, this high-end car does not get rain-sensing automatic wipers. Not to be missed are the front console wireless smartphone charger and auto anti-glare inside rear view mirror with UVO controls and smartwatch connectivity. Now before we finish with the interiors, let's get to know where the spare tire is. This tire is between the B and C pillars. In order to get this tire out, you need to remove the mat from the right side of the second row seat. There is a small flap which needs to be pulled out. You will get to see a nut-like object which needs to be opened with a nut tool. The tire which is under the floorboard will slip out and one can pull off the spare tire for replacement. Incidentally, the toolbox is in the boot area. With a 2.2 litre VGT BS6 compliant common rail direct injection engine, there is a lot of power and torque available to pull this mammoth vehicle along. The moment you step on the accelerator, you realize that this very linear power delivery, which is well spaced out thanks to the 8 speed Sportsmatic transmission. This automatic transmission gets the vehicle off its feet in a jiffy and reaches speeds above the 100 km per hour mark within seconds. The engine delivers a peak power of 197 HP which comes around 3800 RPM and a peak torque of 440 Nm is attained anywhere between 1500 to 2750 RPM range. The suspension too has been perfectly tuned to ensure that the occupants have a smooth ride. With disc brakes on all four wheels, one can also be very sure of the vehicle's braking capabilities. While the ride and handling for such a huge vehicle are very good, what needs to be changed is the steering wheel feedback. It's too soft to deal with and you really do not feel that you are driving a mammoth car. The Kia Carnival Limousine comes with a host of safety features like ABS with EBD, brake assist, electronic stability control, hill start assist control, rollover mitigation, cornering brake control, driver and passenger airbags, side and curtain airbags, isofix child anchor, front seat belts with pre-tensioner and load limiter, burglar alarm and immobilizer.